Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another video for Eve Echoes. Now let it never be said that Captain Benzie cannot admit when he gets something wrong because that's what today's video is going to be pretty much entirely about. I recent, recently put out a video regarding the Rorqual which is this absolute industrial behemoth you can see on screen now and during that video I made several large mistakes that I need to go back and rectify. I will do a complete Rorqual call from the ground up video eventually when I have some time to sit down and do that so I can delete this and the next video at uh, the previous one and just have one accurate video up but for those of you who watched the first one allow me to clarify a few points correct a few misleading statements that I gave um, and ultimately just apologize and showcase some stuff that was asked of me afterwards. Now this has taught me a valuable lesson and that's that when I go into doing any industrial content I should absolutely get a list of questions from my industrialist friends because a lot of the stuff that they've asked like I just forgot to cover stuff that really actually in hindsight is a really good thing to cover so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going over corrections and looking at some of the more details for the raw call. So as usual if you enjoy the video please hit like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes and if you can forgive me for done goofing on this one and you want to keep supporting this channel you can head over to my patreon and indeed my redbubble merch store okay let's jump into the fitting then so the first and probably the largest mistake i made in the video was in regards to the industrial command modules now, the industrial command module is the blue module here, and I basically explained that this has an optimal range of 45 kilometers, therefore it gives these bonuses to everything within 45 kilometers. That is not true. I was not able to fully test this at the time, but it has since become apparent this is not the case. That mining form and burst strength bonus of 150%, the range bonus of 150%, drone mining amount 281, drone DPS 125, drone EHP 125, 25, shield booster 90 and remote shield booster minus 40 only apply to the raw call when this industrial command module is active. If you activate this module, that is the bonuses that are applied to the raw call and only to the raw call. Now that asks the question, what is the 45 kilometers there? And that brings me to another thing that I completely forgot to mention in the raw call video, which is its compression. You see, when the orca, uh, when the raw call is activated, it compresses the ores in its cargo hold and absolutely in its ore hold. Sorry, let's be specific here. It compresses ores in its ore hold. And ultimately, when you are using the industrial command module, the blue one, it also does this for every friendly ship within that range. So when you are activating an industrial command module, it will consume 5,184 gigajoules from your uh, cargo hold. The activation time of 87.48 seconds begins, and at the end of that activation time, any ore that is in your ore hold or in the ore hold of a friendly ship will be compressed into rich ore to the best of the raw call's ability. Obviously, if there are overhangs, then it will um, it will ultimately hold back on those. So if you've got, say, I'll showcase it later with 10,000 um, score die that I have in the ore hold on this particular ship, and we'll see that actually in action. But it means if you are mining with a fleet, then that any ship within 45 kilometers at the end of that activation cycle, they are going to have every ore in their cargo hold, in their ore hold, compressed into the rich version of that. And I think that's really, really cool. And it's something that I absolutely should have mentioned beforehand. What we're also going to do now is just have a look at the SEAL Industrial Enhanced module. You'll notice that this gives a lot better personal amounts there um, across the board. This, of course, does not affect other friendly ships um, at all. And it's worth noting that this one as well still compresses ore, but only your ore. If you're using the Industrial Enhanced module, the red version on your ship, you will only compress your own personal ore. Anyway, let's fit that one on for the time being, for the purposes of a demonstration later. Now, another thing that people pointed out to me was that the Rorqual's mining amount seemed a little bit low compared to their math, and that's because I was an idiot and I put standard mining drone rigs into the Rorqual's rig slots because I forgot that Exuma rigs are even a thing. Now, on the plus side, this does showcase that if you really want to use a Rorqual with just standard mining drones, which you can, you can still fit standard mining rigs to uh, my, uh, the mining drone rigs to it as well. However, of course, it is going to do a lot 
lot better with Exhumer drones, and those Exhumer drones get benefits instead from Exhumer drone rigs, which I have now got the codes for, I've now created, and I have tested. And I can confirm that like with the standard mining drones, the very best yield is done by having Exhumer drone circulation accelerator twice and one of the efficiency upgrades. Now the circulate, this is kind of good news because the circulators are probably going to end up being higher demand, therefore they'll be expensive. It's nice to know that this time around you only need two of them. The third one will be the efficiency upgrade and that gives you the best possible mining amount. And if we now have a look at one of the Exuma Heavy drones that have been added to this, well you can see that they've got a mining amount of 20.88 cubic meters. That's a little bit better, right? Ultimately that should be show showing you that those uh, Exuma rigs do a lot more and obviously once we activate the enhanced module you'll see that in action even further. Now the other question that people wanted to ask me while I undock and while I move to a belt was regarding the Rorqual as a combat vessel because of course you can put standard heavy drones into the Rorqual's uh, drone tubes as well things like berserkers or uh, ogres and things like that and yes that absolutely works and I will be showcasing in a moment what that can actually do in regards to DPS. What I wanted to do first of all though was actually just showcase the align time and warp time here of a raw call. This is not a fast ship. A lot of people have asked for demonstrations of the mining ships and I was a bit like, really? You want me to demonstrate mining? Because combat I feel I have to demonstrate because I'm showcasing that the fit does indeed work, that the weapons can handle the small ships as well as the large uh, ships, that the tank can handle all the incoming damage, that kind of thing. Mining, you don't really necessarily get like anything that I'm trying to prove with mining. But as Yatsuki did point out to me, considering this is such a big expensive ship and not many people will necessarily get to fly it, it might be nice to showcase it for folks just so they can see what one of these does look like in action. And the reason I'm doing the undock and all that as well is I do want to showcase just how slow and ponderous this thing is. That's an important fact, I think, for the industrialists flying it, and also for, for example, anyone who wants to be hunting one of these things to understand just how heavy and slow it really, really can be. So, once we are here in the belt, I will activate the red um, the red industrial module here, the industrial enhance module, um, and showcase how these all look when we start mining with them. And then I'll just showcase the concept of what would happen if we were to fit um, mine, uh, the standard combat drones. So actually, for a second, let's just jump into the fitting, and I'm going to fit nothing but combat drones, because I want to showcase what cold DPS on these combat drones looks like to start off with, then we'll show the heated DPS later on, because I want to showcase how this actually changes, because it's a little bit terrifying. So here we are, I'm going to put in a load of Republic Fleet Berserkers into those drone tubes. So now that we have five Republic Fleet Berserkers in the drone tubes, you can see our cold DPS is 578.65. Now you cannot put standard drone combat rigs onto the raw call. I did try, I did fit or try to fit on some drone uh, speed augmenters um, and things like that. It just tells you they will not fit in there and there's no capital variant of that. If you were going to try and put uh, fighter rigs on there, I can also confirm I did test because people were asking. Fighter rigs, of course, do not affect standard drones. But there we are. We've got a cold DPS there of 578.65. So we're now going to swap back to the Manta Ray Heavy Exhumer drones. And this does take a little bit of time to do, so it's worth noting that if your Rorqual does come under fire, just be aware it's going to take you a bit of time, assuming even you've got a nicer uh, drone bay layout than I have there. Things are going to take you a bit of time to swap to those five, but once we've got them in position, again, standard drone amount here was 20.88 cubic meters. So we are now going to essentially launch these bad boys into space. Now, curiously, these don't just start harvesting on their own. You do still need to lock onto some asteroids, but it doesn't really matter which ones you lock onto. So just lock onto a whole ton of the ones that are in range of you. Once you've locked on, start sending the drones out and they will not actually fly at these individual asteroids. It's not like they're all gonna go after the crokite that I've got targeted. They will start harvesting everything. Now you'll notice if I go into the uh, ore hold here, 
I did bring, as I said, a 10k stack of Spodumane with me. And you can see that I'm harvesting some of these other bits and pieces here. Those drones are off doing their thing, harvesting, harvesting. And they're actually really cool to look at as well. If you observe these things, they remind me a little bit of sleeper drones, which is really quite cool. They're very interesting looking drones. And these act like strip miners. You have to lock on to actually activate them and send them out. But once they're activated, you can actually drop your lock on everything and they will just activate like standard strip miners. Um, and just do their thing there. Now, I say this, I haven't actually ever done the full lock off before. Part of me is worried they're all going to disengage, but no, now that they are there, you can see they're still mining despite the fact that I have no lock. Now, of course, this is all very well and good doing all of this, but let's now activate that industrial enhanced mode. Now, I can't showcase this, unfortunately. I can't get a decent sound, uh, sound quality sample of this, but the sound that this thing makes, let me explain to you, is nothing short of monstrous. It is amazing as the sort of the flame vents go off there. This thing stands upright. The capsules on the side there all lock into position. They spread out and lock in and you get this massive upright monstrosity of a vessel overlooking the entirety of the field in front of you. And of course you can activate your mining foreman link as well if other people were mining around. No point if you're here on your own. But once we have this, you can see now that our mining amount has gone up to 71.94 cubic meters. That's monstrous. Let's flick in from the side again, grab my usual calculator, 71.94 cubic meters multiplied across the five drones, 359.7. That is a big increase on what we had before there. And off they go doing their thing. You'll also notice that if I go back into the ore hold, that uh, spodumane, is now down to a stack of two. You'll see that now that it's at over a stack of 100, which is enough for it to be compressed, let's have a look, 448, and we're gonna wait for the industrial enhance module here to fully cycle. And you'll see if we have a quick look back, 448, I don't think it'll live update with me watching it. No, it does, it live updates with me watching it. There we are, it compresses everything in the hold. Now, one of the things that Yatsuki pointed out to me here is that that means rather than using the compression mechanic that you currently have available in Eve Echoes, you can just hand off a load of ore to a Rorqual pilot who can undock from whatever station they're at, shovel the stuff into their cargo hold, and then just compress it. And it's really not a bad way of doing it, if I'm being completely frank. You can make a lot of ore compressed very quickly by doing that. Right, all that said and done then, let's now finally retrieve all of these drones. And then we are going to replace these and we're going to bring out the Berserkers one at a time here. Slightly faster way of doing it. Here we go. Although it still does have the bug. Beautiful. <sighs> Something already in that location. Okay, fine, fine, fine game. If we're going to play silly buggers with this, let's go in and do it manually. There. Okay, now check that DPS. <laughs> that is with the industrial enhanced module activated because remember that's giving you 375% additional drone DPS, which takes the drone DPS of the Rorqual up to a frankly terrifying 1818 DPS. And you'll notice in my low slots, I have not used anything like a drone damage amplifier. There's nothing in there to push that up higher. That is just the raw DPS from the drones there, which I personally think is ever so slightly terrifying. Right, so let us now pull everything and retrieve all back. I'm going to then swap all of these back to the Exhumer drones, the heavy Exhumers here, one at a time doing it the slow heavy way, but the way that doesn't bug out at least. That's always important, right? You don't want things bugging out on you in the middle of making a video. Your audience looks at you funny when that happens. So, <laughs> looks at me like I can see you guys right now. I can imagine what you're doing on your face now, like, oh my god, Benzie's ranting again, help. Uh, there we are, we got all five into position. So now we are going to launch all of these drones, including the ones that tell me that they're not there. Of course we bug out completely. Why wouldn't we? Why would we not just bug out and ruin all of this for Benzie? Um, 
There's already something in that location. I know there's something in that location. But the game doesn't know there's something in the location. That's the problem. The game needs to know. Ah, uh, man. Oh, well, we're just going to go off this way and see if we can just activate these without... Yeah, okay, you can activate them without locking. There we go. You can just activate them without locking and they will just go after whatever. So you don't have to lock on and then unlock later. You can just lock on and let those mining drones go do their thing. And there we have it, the absolute industrial behemoth and powerhouse that is the Rorqual. What an incredible ship this honestly is, um, despite the bugs here at the end. The amount of stuff you can mine with this personally is insane. If you want to help boost up a fleet around you of other people in cover to twos, it's insane. The sounds it's making doing that industrial activation, I wish you could hear it. It is just amazing. Seriously, even if if you're a combat pilot, ask one of your industrialists once the raw call is built, come and fly alongside it and listen to the sound that that thing makes when it uh, does that blast off on the sides there. And the fact that you can just boost up a fleet to the extent that you can is pretty amazing. The DPS that it can put out is pretty amazing. I'm honestly flabbergasted by this. There's a reason that the Rorqual is one of the most iconic and sort of legendary ships in EVE Online. It's now here in Echoes and okay, it doesn't do what I was hoping the industrial update would do, but at the same token, I can't help but be a little bit in awe of the simple majesty of this absolute king of all industrial vessels. Just look at it. Just look at it, it's astonishing. Anyway, folks, rather than sit here and listen to me wax lyrical for the next goodness knows how long about how astonishing this ship looks, there it is in action. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you can forgive me the mistakes. Again, I will eventually get around to doing a one-off video that includes all the correct information on how to fly one of these in one go. But if you're keen on the raw call, at least you now have all of the correct information to hand. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching me right the way through to the end on this one. Sorry for the mistakes that were made beforehand. Hopefully this clarifies it all for you. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.